Now in this lecture, we'll learn how to configure the router so that it forwards incoming connections to the Kali machine. So we can receive reverse connections, we can hook people to beef, and launch attacks outside the network the same way that we used to launch them inside the network. So, to get to the router settings, usually the router is the first IP in the subnet. So, we, you can see that my IP was 192.168.0.11. Usually the router is the first one, so it will be 192.168.0.1. Also, another way to get it, uh, you can type in route n. And that will show you where the gateway is. And as you can see, it's at 192.168.0.1. So this is the local IP address of the router. We're going to browse that, browse that in our browser. So I'm just going to type it in here. 192.168.0.1. Hit enter. And as you can see, I have my router settings. And I have to log in with the username and password. Now, the router settings might look different from router to router. But the names are usually the same. Usually, first of all, you'll have to log in, as you can see here for me. And you either have a default username and, or, and password. Or it'll be, you'll see them on a sticker behind or underneath the router itself. So for me, I've actually changed the password. So I'm just going to log in. So I'm logged in here to my control panel. And again, it might look different for you, but you want to look for something called IP forwarding. For me, it's under advanced. So I'm going to go to advanced. And then I'm going to go on forwarding. And this is where I can set up my IP forwarding. So look for something called IP forwarding or I've actually seen them on some routers called virtual network. I don't know why. But you want to look for something that allows you to set up rules to redirect ports inside the network. So the port that we're listening on at the moment is port 8080. So that's the port that we picked in the handler. That's the port that we picked in the backdoor. And that's the port that we want to get the connection on. So the public port is going to be 8080. And again, the target port is going to be 8080. And the target IP address is the IP address that's listening on the port. So this is the IP address of the Kali machine where you have your handlers running. So the IP address of my Kali machine right here is 192.168.0.11. And we can see that also right here from the result of if config. So it's 192.168.0.11. I'm going to type that in here. And that's it. That's the rule that we want to add. I'm going to click on save. And that rule is saved. So now whenever the router gets a request for port 8080, it'll know that it's going to forward that request to the Kali machine and the router will not cut that connection. So we've actually set up a proper route right now. So the first thing we did is we created a backdoor. We used the real IP in the backdoor. We didn't use the private IP. So we didn't use the 192.168.0.11. We used the real IP. We're going to send that backdoor to a device in a different network. That device is going to run the backdoor. The backdoor will try to connect back on the real IP to the router. But the router will know exactly what to do with this because we just set up a rule telling the router to forward any request that it gets on port 8080 to the Kali machine. What I also want to do is I actually want to set up a rule for port 80. This is the port that Apache, that my web server runs on. And I want to enable that so that I can download the route, the backdoor from the target computer. So I'm going to add a rule for port 80. And again, this is going to be the same machine, the Kali machine. And we're going to put port 80 here. We're going to save this rule. And this will allow me to download the backdoor because I placed the backdoor in var www right here. So I'll actually be able to access my web server in Kali and download the backdoor from outside the internet. So I'm going to start my Apache web server. So this is actually just another example. You don't really need to do this. You can just transfer the backdoor using USB or any other method or send it by email. I'm just showing you another example of how port forwarding is used. Now I'm going to go to a Windows machine. And that Windows machine is going to be connected to a completely different network. And we're going to download the file from there. So here is my Windows machine. 
And if I go and check my IP, you'll see it has a different external public IP. So I'm just gonna look for what's my IP. You'll see that the IP here is completely different than the IP of this, of this machine that we used. So these are two completely separate devices connected to different networks. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna access my Apache web server and download the backdoor. And normally without IP forwarding, you won't be able to do that. And to access that, first I'm gonna get the IP of this machine again, cause I forgot it. And it's 89.100.145.189. And we called our backdoor backdoor, so I'm just gonna type in backdoor.exe. And I'm gonna hit enter. It's actually 189 here, not 89. And as you can see, I was able to download the backdoor. And this should actually tell you that IP forwarding has been set up correctly because without that, without IP forwarding, I wouldn't be able to access my web server and download the backdoor. So I'm actually accessing the web server in Kali as if it's a normal website. Like you can actually host fake web pages, you can host websites, anything you want right now on your Apache. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna run the backdoor. And we'll see if that'll give me a reverse connection on my Kali machine, which is on a completely different network. And as you can see, I got a reverse interpreter shell, and you can see that the shell is coming from an external IP address into my internal IP address to the Kali machine. And right now I can control the target computer and do all the things that we do in the post connection attacks.